fourth and fifth. Uh, Jack, you've got more on Dan? Yeah, it's Rabbit and Hound right now as Dan Weldon goes to the outside and tries to overtake his nemesis, Danica Patrick. His team told him before they dropped the green flag, try to get as many spots as you can in the first five laps. We're ticking them off. This is happening, Marty, at 215 miles an hour. Just nerves of steel by both of them. You got to remember, they had that stern talking to from Brian Barnhart, as Jack called them, the principal. They were in the principal's office. They know what's expected of them. Well, what we saw on that last lap, they each gave each other the space they needed. Danica maintains the position. And she is uh, ahead of Weldon, coming by the stripe this time. Back to the front four. It is Sam Hornish, Tony Kanan, Danica Patrick, and Dan Weldon. So these two in lockstep down the back stretch. We're working lap 10 of 228 here at Texas Motor Speedway. Oh my, they're getting close through three and four. Stay with us, we're coming right back. Here at the Great American Speedway, you're on board with Dan Weldon, and this has been fun to watch. The two that have been feuding all week long in the nationwide press are running third and fourth, and neither is giving any quarter. They are giving each other respect. Well, they are, but I have to admit, I gotta believe that right now this is just eating the inside of Dan Weldon because you know something? He never likes to be behind any cars that are in front. We've seen that all year. He's just tenacious. It doesn't matter what he's doing, practice or race. He wants to lead each and every lap, and I'm sure he's looking for any way right now to get past Danica Patrick. Fitz well, she knows that she has a good race car. Let's watch here. Uh, this looks like she just got a little bit of dirty air from the cars up in front. She had to get off the throttle and got slowed up mid-turn, lost her momentum, and Weldon took advantage, Marty. And you can see that the race leaders are running at the 211 to 212 pace right now. A couple of cars. There's A.J. Foyt, the fourth, across the top of your screen. They're showing him in 12th now. He started 18th, so another one of the vision racers moving up as we are on board with Dan Weldon. Started 10th has marched his way to third. We heard the report from Jack Aru, the, the guys, and we saw this also in practice, Scott, pulling up on, look at Weldon. He is all over the track trying to get around the 11 car of Tony Kanaan. Remember I said he never likes being behind a car that's in front. Doesn't matter if it's practice or the race, but he's gonna have to settle down just a little bit. That weaving back and forth might cause him problems. So we're around 42 to 46 laps. So we're hearing now 10 more would put us at 46. And, and the most important thing here is we're going to go back and look at some telemetry with Dan Weldon. Watch this Firestone telemetry come up. Let's see how his throttle is compared to Dario Franchitti. Can he keep 100% throttle all the way around? Now, we had a truck race here last night. These cars are on the track for the first time since last night. So that means there's different rubber down there. They use Goodyear tires. These are Firestone Firehawks. Also, these drivers are now getting used to what the car is doing. They're relaying that information back to the pit lane. Engineers are going to make a decision on what changes they're going to make for their cars during this first pit stop. Because there's no sense in sitting back and trying to conserve and hope that you're at the front at the end. All right, while you're on board with Dan Weldon, we're hearing word that Thomas Schechter has uh, come back out. There he is on the right side in pit lane. So they are wheeling the car back out. They'll get him fueled and he'll be back out, but he is already 29 laps behind. Now, this is not a bad move because he's going to go out. We got a long time in this race right now. We got 228 laps. We're 116, 117 laps into this. On board with Dan Weldon. Not been a rough season for him. He's had two wins. Well, it did get a little rough back in Milwaukee if you saw all the pushing and the discussion going on. Dan, before the race, uh, talked about his feelings. And you saw over the shoulder of Dan, he almost lost that race car for a moment. It washed out on him coming out of the corner. Take a look at the battle for position. Dan Weldon is leading in this battle. He's third, Danica fifth. He's really seesawing at that wheel a fair amount. You can see him sort of guide off the, the throttle also. She, the car has now become actually very loose going through the turn. He keeps his foot on it, doesn't really scrub off that much momentum and keeps the car going along in third spot. That's called standing up in the seat, Marty, and he's just driving that car past its limit right now. That's the driver doing that job. Well, and he and Sam Hornish are probably known as the two that most can drive loose, that they're always on that edge more than just about 
anybody else. Absolutely. It loosens when the back end of the car sort of wants to swap ends. It's like the back end wants to slide out from underneath you. Now, when he gets closer to the car in front, you can hear him ease off the gas. See how the car walks up the racetrack right there? That's because the front is starting to push its way out. It's starting to get a little bit of understeer, and then it goes to You're losing ground. Take a look. This is what the action was like. And you're right, Jack, but Danica, ha in, in one other point, she has been running the low line all night long. But uh, still, I mean, this was slowing everybody down, and Sam was pulling away. Step, four position, and as you're all just, with Dan. And they're all just cha trying to chase down Sam Hornish Jr. And you mentioned about the bowling scenario. You know, Sam bowls all the time back in Defiance, Ohio. That's something he loves to do with his buddies. But this week, you know who beat him? His teammate, Elio Castroneves. Bowled a better game than Sam Hornish Jr. Yeah, but I heard he was using an alley ball, and he did. You know, you know, when you're a good bowler, you want your own equipment. So I'm going to stick up for Sam on that one. Right now, it's a 5.2 second lead as Hornish is leading Scott Dixon. There's Dixon in front of Dan Weldon. Thanks. And the yellow has just come out as we have problems on a multiple car crash here, including one of the target cars. And Dan Weldon is involved as well. And it looks like Elio Castroneves, the second race in a row that he has crashed. Here comes Dan. And there is what's left of one tire bouncing off the pit wall. So let's ride along now with the number 10 car of Dan Weldon. Everything's happening up in front now. He does not have anywhere to go. And he's actually almost like the bowling ball going down the bowling lane right yeah, there. It, it happened so quick. Yeah, just, you know, I, a little bit of bad luck for uh, the guys at Target Chip Ganassi Racing and myself. It was um, some un unfortunate, but uh, we just didn't quite have the speed today. But nonetheless, I think everybody tried real hard. Um, Here's the onboard. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, just, just unfortunate. There's, there's really not much I could do, so it's, it's disappointing for everybody. But uh, you know, I've, I've had worse happen to me. We need to just bounce back and uh, be strong and, and try and win the next race. Thanks, Dan. Let me give you an update too on his teammate Scott Dixon. Dixon got out of the car, but the crew is still working, and Dixon is ready, if necessary, to go back in and try and log some laps.